What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go over a quick review for simplifying complex fractions. So if you have a test the next day, or you just need a quick little review, in this video, I'm going to highlight the main important things that you need to understand, as well as work through a couple different examples. So let's kinda of do a quick little review of adding and subtracting fractions. Actually, let's not do a quick little review, right? We don't have time for that. We're doing complex fractions. But this should be a problem that you're like, all right, I, you know, I can go ahead and add those if I you know, go and want to, and that's fine, get common denominators, but us. So a complex fraction is when we have fractions but then divided by another fraction. And let's say in this case, it'd be like a one third. And then you could even like subtract another one, be like minus one fourth. And now you can see if you do not like fractions or fractions confusing you, looking at a complex fraction can be very, very confusing. But there's a couple things that I want you to know. We can make fractions simple by understanding one thing. Let's say I have the number eight, all right? Now, here's what's really important. If I hit eight, divided by eight, what is that? That is just equal to one, right? You're like, obviously, where are you going with this? Well, here's the important thing that I want you to understand. If I take a number eight, and let's say I divide it by a one third. Now again, what I want to achieve is I want my denominator to equal to one. Why? Because eight divided by one is just equal to eight, right? Divided by one is really, really easy. So what I want you to understand is if I have a three in the denominator, what I want to achieve is getting rid of this three in the denominator. How do you do that? You multiply by what's in your denominator. So if I multiply this by three over one, or the reciprocal, what happens? Three divides into three, one time. I'm left with a one over one, which again is one. Now again, here's the important thing though. Whatever you do in this denominator, you have to make sure you do in the numerator, right? So therefore, this has now been divided out to one, and therefore this is going to be a 24. So how does this apply to this? Well, what I have here is one, two, three, four different denominators, right? But what I wanna do is be able to achieve a number that all of those four denominators evenly divide into. Now that special number is gonna be our LCD, which in this case is going to equal to a 12. So could you add your fractions in the numerator? Could you add your fractions in the denominator and then divide them? Absolutely. And a lot of times I teach that with students, but if I'm just doing a quick little review and I wanna give you like the quickest, fastest, easiest way to understand and simplify complex fractions, this is the way I like to do it. So if I multiply, everything times 12, and again, everything, right? Because whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do your numerator. If your terms are separated by addition, you gotta make sure you distribute. So I'm gonna multiply this 12 on the top, as well as on the denominator. And again, what's important here? All of these denominators evenly divide into 12. Two divides into 12, six times. Six divides into 12, two times. Three divides into 12, four times. And four divides into 12, three times. Six plus two is going to be eight. Four minus one, four minus three is going to be one. So my final answer in this case is going to be an eight. Now, I understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is all just with simple numbers. So let's apply this understanding and this concept with some rational complex expressions. All right, so in this rational or complex fraction, and again, I meant to say ver complex fractions with variable expressions, but in this case, you can see that we just have a you know fraction, a numerator fraction, the denominator, and it's both x, right? So if I want to get x off the denominator, I got to have x divide into itself, right? So what I'm simply going to do is just multiply the numerator and the denominator and make sure you distribute that by both terms by x. Because again, what happens there when I multiply an x times a two over x, I'm not going to do this for each one of these but I just want you to see. When you multiply x times two over x, the x divides into itself, right? So we could say it divides out. And then obviously I have x times four is four x. And then over here, you're going to have a two over x times x, which again, x's are going to divide out, plus a three x. Now let's go and rewrite our simplified term. So I have a two minus a four x divided by a two plus a three x. Now you can obviously factor out the two, Right, but now the important thing is we need to understand, well, what are going to be our excluded values, right? So if we go back to our original complex fraction, we know x cannot equal a zero. Because in this case, if you have zero in your denominator, right, then two divided by zero is going to be undefined. That is not going to work. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and take a look at our solution over here, or really, you can get it this way as well. Two over x plus three is equal to zero. We cannot have this denominator equal to zero. Agreed? Because if this denominator equals zero, you can't divide by zero. So how do we be able to define this? So I have a two over x equals negative three, multiply an x on both sides. I get two equals to a negative three x, divide by negative three, divide by negative three, x is equal to a negative two thirds. So x equals a negative two thirds. Now, technically, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that's actually exactly how you're gonna get it over here. If you just go ahead and take this two plus three x and set it equal to zero, 
When you go and solve, you subtract the two, divide by three, you're gonna get that exact same excluded solution. But I wanted you to understand that, yeah, this simplified solution cannot be zero, right? So you have to make sure you include this simplified solution as well as your original solution. All right, so in this example, we have one fraction in the numerator, two fractions in the denominator. Now, again, in this case, we have this expression x minus three as well as x plus five. Now again, and this denominator is x plus five as well. So the only thing they have in common here is obviously this x plus five, but I guess so I gotta divide, those gotta be divided out by an x plus five, but this needs to divide into an x minus three. So the LCD in this case is simply going to be just the product of all my denominators because they don't have anything else in common, right? If we can simplify, we always wanna simplify. That's always step number one. But in this case, you can see these denominators are all going to be different with nothing in common. So I am going to multiply everything times an x minus three times an x plus five. Again, that's going to be everything in the numerator as well as into the denominator. But for simplicity, I'm going to write it as all in brackets with some little lines here to multiply everything, all right? Now, again, for simplicity, I'm just gonna do this one at a time and I'll talk my way through it. So if I took this expression, and multiply that by that expression. The x plus fives will divide into themselves, right? So that's gonna leave me with a three times x minus three in my de denominator. Over here, x minus threes will divide out, and that's gonna leave me with a two times an x plus five. And then over here, my x plus fives will divide out, and that's gonna leave me with a positive x minus three. All right, now again, we have some good old distributive property, so let's go and apply that. Um, so therefore, I get a three x minus nine, all is all over a 2x plus 10 plus x minus three. And then we can simplify this one more time, 3x minus nine. Let's see, I can combine those to give me a 3x plus a seven. Now again, what we simply need to do is check our included values. We know x cannot equal a positive three, a negative five, and then here for our simplified solution, we need to be able to set this equal to zero and figure out what that's going to be. So if I take a three x plus seven, set it equal to zero, subtract the seven, divide by three, x is gonna equal a negative seven thirds. So that is going to be my final solution that is going to be excluded. All right, so in this case, we have now three different denominators. So again, guys, listen, the first step is always to do this, factor, factor, factor. Right? I can't factor anything else except for here. This should be glaring obvious to you. Factor it. What two numbers multiply to give me six, add to give me a five, that's going to be a x plus three times an x plus two. And what do you know, ladies and gentlemen, x plus three, was that supposed to be an x plus three? I think I made a mistake. That's supposed to be an x plus three over here. And what do you know, ladies and gentlemen, x plus three is shared here, x plus two is gonna be shared here. So guess what, the LCD is going to be it's simply just gonna be an x plus three times x plus two, right? Because that divides into itself. X plus two divides into this. X plus three divides into this, right? So I'm simply just going to multiply each and every one of my terms times an x plus three times an x plus two. All right, now when doing this, now here we have a subtraction, so we're gonna to have to start being very careful. When I multiply this times this, my x plus twos divide out, leave me with a three times x plus three. Minus, when I multiply this times this, my x plus threes divide out, so I'm gonna have a negative x times an x plus two. And then for my denominator, everything divides out, right? This is gonna evenly divide into that. So that's just gonna leave me with a two x minus one. All right, so now let's go and apply a little distributive property. That's gonna leave me with a three x plus nine, negative x. So that's a negative x squared minus a two x, all divided by a two x minus one. Now again, we can go ahead and combine some terms here. So negative x squared, those three x minus x is going to be a positive x plus nine divided by a two x minus one. Now again, we need to go back and identify what can x not equal, our excluded values. Well, we know x cannot equal negative two. We know x cannot equal a negative three. And now we just need to determine from our simplified solution, what else is it? So we set our denominator equal to zero, add one divided by two, x cannot equal a one half. So we say x cannot equal a positive one half. All right, the reason why I wanted to go over four examples is because hopefully you're recognizing some patterns that we are seeing with these problems. Now, I'm not picking the easiest complex fractions, but I'm definitely not picking the hardest complex fractions. But I think it's important still to be able to go over this routinely and you'll be able to see that, yeah, the way that I'm approaching simplifying these is all the exact same way. First thing I'm doing is factoring, looking to see what can I simplify. Here, I recognize I can do factor that into an x minus two times x plus two. Now I'm looking for the smallest expression that all of my denominators evenly divide into. So obviously x minus two plus times x plus two is divisible by x minus two. 
and divisible by x plus 2. Right? So therefore, it has to be also divisible by itself. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be my LCD. Now again, where a lot of students will make their mistakes is just going through this next step, especially when we have subtraction. So again, that's why I always like to visualize it and sometimes write it out. But for the case of you know doing a quick review, I don't want to rewrite the whole expression. I don't have that big of a whiteboard like I did when I was in the classroom. So if I multiply this, and again, you can always think about this as over 1. right? So this is in our numerator. This is in our denominator. My x minus 2s divide out. Right? So I'm left with a 3 times x plus 2. Over here, everything divides out, so I'm just left with a negative 6. Over here, x plus 2 divide out, I'm left with a 3 times x minus 2. Over here, my x minus 2s divide out, oh, I wrote on my light. So therefore, I'm going to be left with a 1 times x plus 2. Now, we just need to apply good old distributive property. I don't know why distributive property with 1 doesn't really matter. So in this case, now I get a 3x plus 6 minus 6 all over a 3x minus 6, and then plus x plus 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Obviously, that goes to 0. So I'm dealing with a 3x over 3x plus x is going to be a 4x. Negative 6 plus 2 is going to be a negative 4. All right, now let's talk about excluded values, right? What are the numbers that are going to make my original expression, as well as my simplified expression, 0, or the denominator 0? Over here, I'm going to have a a positive 2, so x cannot equal 2. Over here, I'm going to say x cannot equal a negative 2. And then over here, if I take a 4x minus 4 equal to 0, add 4 divided by 4, I know x also cannot equal 1. Now again, the way that you can understand this is again, like even if you were to look at this as a 3 over x plus 2 plus a 1 over x minus 2 equal to 0, right? If you set your denominator equal to 0, then again, we would actually do the exact same thing as far as our finding our solution. I'd multiply everything by x plus 2 times x minus 2. So I'll be left with a 3 times x minus 2 plus a x plus 2 is equal to 0 if I multiplied by the product of these two. And what I want you to see is we're going to get the exact same. So 3x minus 6 plus x plus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore, that is going to be a 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. And you can see that's the exact same thing what we did here, but we just did it in a more simplified approach. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is your complex fractions. I know it's, it's good review, and it's very, very helpful to have an understanding for complex fractions, because now in the last video of our quick review for rational expressions, it's going to be solving rational expression. And that video is coming up now.